Good Tuesday morning here on the Cross Border Interview Podcast. My name is Christopher Brown, as always, and we are back for episode two of Drag Week on the Cross Border Interview Podcast. And today we are sitting down with Jessica Rabbit. Jessica, thank you so much for doing this. It's an honor and a pleasure. Thank you for having me. So, Jessica, I've asked uh, yesterday's guest and now you, what is drag? Whatever you want it to be. Drag has no rules, and that's what I love so much about it, is it's an art form where you can just exist and perform and just be surrounded by love. What got you into the drag community? And the, what, got your, what was your start in the drag community, I should say? Actually, hold up. Pause. Let's, let, let's go back to the second question I should have asked the last guest I had on yesterday <laughs> that I didn't. Who sure. is Jessica Rabbit? Uh, Jessica Rabbit is newer to the Calgary scene. I've been doing drag coming on a year now, so not as seasoned as some of my uh, friends. <laughs> but I, I mean, I'm a feelings queen, I'd like to describe it as, as I like to tell my life story uh, through performance. So every single song that I perform has a personal meaning to me. What drew you to the art form? I grew up being a theater kid. I was huge into theater as a kid. I grew out of it when I moved to Canada 18, 19 years ago now. And I kind of lost my arts. I went through some tough stuff and I just battled addiction, got through all of that. And then I started going to drag shows and I realized that I could help people who had been through some of the crap that I'd been through by performing and reaching out and being a part of this community, I could help kids. And that's ultimately what I wanted to do. So let's talk about performing. Let's talk about that very first day you decide, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get dragged up and I'm going to go perform my heart out. Do you remember that day? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> let, let, take me through that process of you waking up in the morning to that moment when you went, uh, should I do this? Oh God, I'm on stage. I, I can't back out now. <laughs> okay. Well, my first ever performance um, was actually at a friend or supposed to be at a friend's house. I ended up having a panic attack on her bathroom floor because of the anxiety and stage fright. And I was with three or four friends. Like it wasn't a big show and I backed out <laughs> So that didn't happen. And then actually Visa decline. Who was asked, on yesterday's show. <laughs> yeah. She asked me to do a show as a memorial. Um, and I, at that point, I'd done some of the pandemic drag. So the uh, virtual digital drag where I had complete control. I could edit the videos, make them perfect. <laughs> on the stage, you don't have that option. But when she asked me to do the show on a whim, I said yes. And because it was a memorial, I had no choice but to do it. I couldn't back out. So (laughs) take me through that moment when you get on stage for the first time, because I can imagine that is the most nerve wracking experience because you you just openly admit it. You had a panic attack the very first time in front of friends. And now you are doing it in front of a memorial where people are there to uh, remember someone they've lost. And you are there to sort of entertain them, which is a weird concept, but that's what happened. You were there to entertain and uh, entertain them. So Mm -hmm. getting on stage, was there a panic still? Or did you sort of say, okay, if I don't do it now, I I might not do it? A bit of both. I was absolutely freaking out. I had one of my best friends beside me and they were holding my hand like before and after and I was shaking like a leaf. But at the same time, I was like, this is something you love doing. Go up there and own it. And so I did. <laughs> Do you remember, What song was it? I performed two numbers that night. There was Conan Gray, uh, Checkmate. And oh my gosh, what was the other song? I can't even remember. Hang on, I've got it right here. <laughs> I can find it for you. So Conan Gray. I remember Gray. the name of checkmate i've never heard that song now i will have to add it to the list of music i need to listen to from now on. it was a song that i uh, strongly identified with at the time i was going through a pretty rough breakup and that song very kind of just hit the spot oh wow <laughs> so and this, it seemed perfect 
Could you find the second uh, song? Yeah, the second song was Jody Messina, and it was Heaven Was Needing a Hero. Jody Messina, of course. Um, performing is in. <sighs> Actually, before I ask that question, I, I, I'm, I'm so fascinated with this industry because I'm learning so much this week and I've only had two episodes on and anyone who's tuned in, please listen to the rest because you will learn so much from such a, a swath of different backgrounds. I want to take a moment and say, uh, I think it is uh, pretty obvious. Uh, you, uh, I, 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 okay. You identify as a female, correct? Um, I identify as gender fluid. Gender fluid. I apologize for that. That's um, okay. Uh, I do apologize immensely for that. And anyone who knows me, I will put my foot in the mouth, but I will apologize immensely for the rest of the show. So for the next half hour, you will hear me apologize. It's no um, big deal. <laughs> you, you went into a predominantly gay male heavy centric industry i did as a person who is gender fluid were you accepted when you first decided to get into the community because i can imagine it would have been hard because i know gay guys and i i know some and they are not the most welcoming people from time to time but i talked to a lot of great people in the drag week this week and i can tell you that their stories are making me think maybe it's just my friends <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had already made friends with many of the people in the community before I started drag by going to shows and just talking and hanging out with people. So I already had a pretty diverse group of friends in that community. So it was pretty welcoming when I like finally made the plunge and started performing. And it still is like to this day, I still have people like who I've been friends with who are like, yes, you're rocking it. You've got this. Oh, that's awesome. Um, it's for those who listened to yesterday's show, they will know that my my very first experience with the drag show was on August 28th or 29th. I forgot the exact date. And yesterday's guest was the uh, the MC of the night. And Jessica was the person who was also there. Um, yeah, <laughs> I. My, my only introduction to drag race or drag is RuPaul's Drag Race. And I think there is a misconception in the world that that is what drag is. The campy, the cattiness, the uh, let's put on like a $5,000 gown that we just made out of 12 different things. And you go, wait, huh? Um, when you got into the industry, I'm assuming you had seen RuPaul's Drag Race. Yes. And you then decide to start performing. Did you go to yourself and go, this isn't what I was expecting? Like this, 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 what I, what people are seeing on TV is not what the actual industry is about. Uh, when I started going to drag shows and like hanging out with drag queens and drag kings and drag things, I learned very, very quickly that it is entirely different from what you see on TV on RuPaul's Drag Race. It's, I mean, there's cattiness, absolutely, there's shade, but for the most part, everyone is just really welcoming, loving, and warm, and there's, like, I haven't really experienced any cattiness, so I can't speak on that. I've been pretty blessed in that aspect, but yeah, it's nothing like the show at all. The work that goes into it, like, you need money to be on RuPaul's Drag Race, let's be real. Even like, Drag Race Canada, you need money to be on that as well. Drag Race Canada, <laughs> Drag Race UK, all of them. You need money because those costumes are not cheap. <laughs> they are not cheap. Being a drag queen is not cheap. And that's even more not cheap. <laughs> so you, you mentioned something just recent, just in about, about two minutes ago. And I'm not sure if it was an off the cuff remark or if it was something that actually exists. You said drag queens, drag kings and drag things yes was that an off of the cuff remark or is there actually something called drag things there is actually something called drag things that is a uh, real thing <laughs> so this is this is new to me this okay what is this okay so because drag... i've heard of drag queens i've heard of drag kings i this that's why i was like was that an off the cuff remark should i talk about it but i'm assuming people don't know about this as well what are drag things that's drag a weird statement are... to ask <laughs> 
very much. Um, they are performers, artists who don't identify on the gender spectrum, non-binary, gender fluid. I mean, it's an, a self Do you consider yourself a drag thing? I consider myself more of a drag queen because, I mean, I predominantly do very femme, high femme. Um, but drag things are the, I want to, can I swear? Oh yeah. Uh, fuck. We've had, uh, we've had politicians <laughs> smoke weed on the show. So go right ahead. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so it's dra- it's gender fuckery. Basically. Okay. It's like this person gets on stage and you're not quite sure what they are and it doesn't matter because they're performing and it's amazing. Wow. I, <sighs> Like I said, I, it, we're only 10 minutes into this interview and I, I'm, I'm so happy I have this show because I'm learning so much about this great city and so much about things that I would never have known before. And that's the great thing about learning. You always learn from different people. Um, so thank you so much for that, Jessica. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the pros and cons of drag. You have a very tight-knit community in drag. They stick up for each other. If they see one of their fellow drag queens, drag kings, and drag things, got to say all of them now because (laughs) I now know it. And it's going to be- Now you know. It's going to be the top of, like it's going to be on my lips for the next month and a half. I guarantee (laughs) it. You you have a very tight-knit community that will stand up and come out in defense of anyone attacking a fellow uh, performer. Yes. Has that helped you as a performer? Because I, when I was at the performance that you, I was there watching you, mm-hmm. the, the camaraderie between you, Visa, and Chaos was amazing. It was like you were, had been friends for like your whole life and you were just like, just enjoying yourself. Has it helped you be a better performer with a more tight-knit community that is the community of Calgary? Oh, absolutely. 100%. It's the support is, I can't even describe how invaluable it is. Like, I probably wouldn't have continued doing drag if it hadn't been for the support from the other artists. Like I perform every Wednesday, well, most Wednesdays at uh, Twisted Element. They have a drag contest every Wednesday hosted by the very best. Um, It's called Twisted's Got Talent and it's a competition. So we're competing against each other. But I mean, yesterday, for example, one of my friends, JV, they won and they are an absolutely incredible performer. And like just all the other competitors just cheering her on and being so happy for her. Like it was really warming, like it warmed my heart. So I was like, we're all like trying to kick each other's ass here. But at the same time, like, I love you and I'm so happy for you. I, 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 you, like you, the community is so tight knit. You guys have literally opened up doors from the next like episode because Visa just uh, on her episode talked about you. You're oh. talking about tomorrow's guest. Like it has become <laughs> a, like, I feel like I, thank you. Thank you so much for setting up. So who, those who are listening, JV is going to be on tomorrow's uh, episode. Um, Let's talk about the cons, though, because as much as uh, because I want I want people to realize that not everything is sunshine and roses in this world. We live in a very conservative province. We live in a a semi progressive city. Um, We did just elect our first female mayor. Uh, We have a very progressive city council. But there are still the protractors, the, the ones who will stand up and shout negative things at you. Have you felt the negative aspect of drag here in the city of Calgary? Uh, from the drag performers themselves? Not at all. What about from, from the other, general public? From the general public, like there have been times like I won't take the train home alone after a show. I won't. And I mean, I do that anyway as a female presenting cis female person like it's dangerous for me to take the train or the bus home at night there are like too many sketchy people out there but in drag like I absolutely will not I've been standing outside of Twisted having a smoke or even Dickens this happened just the other week I was standing outside of Dickens waiting for my ride to show up and there were there was a couple guys that just started screaming like horrible things at me and calling me like faggot and 
dyke and all of this. And this was just like last Thursday at Dickens. So, I mean, it absolutely happens. There are people out there that are just never going to get it. You, you, you talked openly about if the tight knit community wasn't there, you might not be performing still today. Are there days when it gets tough when you hear those type of things from, and let's be honest, the people who are coming to see shows are not those people. They are not the ones who are standing out yelling faggot or dyke or whatever. They're, they are more of a friendly atmosphere. But yeah. you, you can only take so much outside before you start getting a little down on yourself. During your year in the industry, has there been a moment when you said, okay, people are negative towards this. I, I don't think I can go on. Or has it been more of a positive experience because of the, like I said before, in the, that tight knit community? So for me, like hearing those things gives me more drive. Oh, really? I want to turn around and be like, fuck you. Look at me. I'm successful. You're not. <laughs> like, it's just always been the way I've been. I've been through a lot of shit in my past. So like, all the hate has just given me strength and gotten me here today. So you, you, it you, never makes me want to quit. Like, I mean, it brings me down, but I never makes me want to quit. Cause like, you know, I'll fall down and cry for a minute, but then I'm going to get back up and I'm going to be like, yo, no, like, I'm not going to allow you to steal that power from me. I did that for too many years of my life. Never again. You, uh, you, you, you seem to have a great head on your shoulder and Thank you. I want to talk about sort of coming out as a performer because uh, I, 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 Visa talked about her coming out and talking to her family and telling people that that's what you want to do as someone who is gender fluid, as someone who is, um, as you say, a cis female who can, a passable cis female. Was it hard to start telling people, this is what I want to do. And I know you talked about your, you having that, that those connections in the industry already, but again, people don't like change. <laughs> it's another person who's going to be coming on the scene who might be taking money uh, away from their, their pocketbooks. So talk about coming out as a drag performer and what the experience was like and how your family took it, how your loved ones took it and how your, uh, your fellow queens and kings and things and took it as well. I mean, for my family, I just kind of did it. So there was no real current coming out for me. I was just like, Hey, this is what I'm doing now. So like it or lump it really. Um, and I mean, I'm adopted. My mom is the most loving, supportive person I have ever met in my life. So she was just like, yeah, my girl, go get it, my girl. Like, she's Has like, she seen money. you perform? <laughs> no, she hasn't. Uh, she lives in the middle of nowhere, Saskatchewan. So uh, I used she to live in that place. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I was out there just recently, though. So I got to hang out with her for a bit. And, and, to, and, and coming out to your friends, because... Like I said, it's a tight knit community and I'm assuming people want the best for everyone, but um, talk about you when you told your friends, this is something, because was it like an outpouring of support? Like, I want to paint your face. Like, let's do this. Let's do this now. And we're going to do this right. Or was it okay? We'll do it on your terms. A lot of my friends were like, what? Like, <laughs> cis females can do drag? <laughs> Like my friends outside of the drag community here, like they were just like, what? Like, how, how does that work? And, and it was like, oh. I'm so, I'm so, I'm so glad you just said that because I didn't want to put words in your mouth when I asked <laughs> this next question is how do you overcome that stereotype? Because I'm assuming when people come to drag shows, they're looking at the performance and going, oh, wait, wait. You're, you're not a gay male. You're a gender fluid person. You're not what I expected when I came here, but I'm still having a good time. What is this all about? Like the mind screwing that you probably do when you perform because people are looking going, wait, that's a, that's a, the, wait, what? <laughs> so talk about that moment. Talk about that aspect of it, because that's the part where I'm so fascinated that people are 
we're 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 like surprised that you want to do it as someone who is gender fluid and as a cis female, but people still enjoy it. Absolutely. I mean, I'm there to entertain. I'm there to give you a good show. Ultimately, that's what I want to do. I want to give you a good show. <laughs> and I have had like people come up to me and be like, women can do drag. And I'm like, well, you know, gender fluid, but it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> um, do you ever get women coming up to you and saying, can we talk? Can we have a conversation? Or someone who is gender fluid and say, can we talk and have a conversation? Because I kind of want to do what you're doing. I haven't yet. Like I've had people express interest, but it's never gone beyond like a drunken talk at the bar. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? Feel free to hit me up on Instagram. Here's my Facebook. Here's my Instagram. You know, hit me up, message me. I don't bite unless you ask. <laughs> and what would you tell someone who did want to come up to you and ask that question because coming up and asking a question point blank is always hard sending a message on social media is hard but when they hear it secondhand from a conversation like this it might be easier for them to accept so if you were talking to someone right now who is gender fluid who is a gay male who is anyone 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 mm -hmm. what would you tell them to think about before getting into the drag industry uh, don't think that RuPaul's Drag Race is the end all be all because it is not. <laughs> there is so much more to drag out there. Like drag, like literally my favorite saying is drag has no rules because it doesn't. You can be whatever you want to be. <laughs>Journalism is in crisis, and our mission here at the Cross Border Interview Podcast is to tell the story that isn't being told. It is vital that independent journalism survives with the rise of fake news. Every penny that is contributed to the Cross Border Interview Podcast goes to help continue our work to tell people's stories. All of our content is produced and edited by our team. The Cross Border Interview Podcast provides entirely free content, and we will never hide stories behind paywalls. By supporting a new model of journalism, our listeners, like you, are supporting real, independent journalism. Consider making a monthly donation via our Patreon account, or make a one-time donation by Interact eTransfer. Now, let's get back to the show. But at the end of the day, you, you wouldn't pass up an opportunity to show up on RuPaul's Drag Race, I'm assuming, right? I mean, I might. <laughs> what? Wow! I, I don't know if RuPaul's really like my kind of style. Like, I think if I were to go on a drag reality show, I would pick Dragula over RuPaul any day. Okay, Visa and you have just mentioned that, and I need to know... <laughs> Am I missing this whole new genre of drag TV shows that I need to freaking start watching here? Is this just new? Well, Dracula is in its fourth season now. So the fourth season just started. There's one, two episodes out now. I totally know what you're talking about now. Yeah, that, <laughs> that one. Four seasons? Oh God, I feel... Yeah. So I, it's uh... um, a show run by the Boulay Brothers and it's horror drag. So... It plays on your fears and horror. Like they went for the first episode, spoiler alert, they went through like a haunted house. Like I, one of the real haunted houses, not the kids' ones. I literally just got the reference. <laughs> it took me two hours to figure out <laughs> that Dracula is Dracula. Yeah, it's a play on Dracula for sure. Oh, my sweet mother of God, I apologize to anyone who's watched this because I have probably had the worst looking face in the last few episodes of, huh, Dragula? Okay. <laughs> and there's um, a new show out too uh, that was just released on Out TV. Like it's brand new for a season. There's only one episode. It came out on Monday. That's the Call Me By Your Mother. Call, call Me Mother. Me, call Me Mother. And Which, like I would go for that over RuPaul's too. So- let's talk about drag families because this is this is the fascinating part to me <laughs> this is the part like i love the performances i love i love the performances that you visa and chaos did that night and it makes me want to go back once my surgery is done and i've got uh, my a-okay -okay from my doctors but who, who do you have a drag house do you have a drag I family i do what is your house of glee bits Okay, and who are the House of Glebitz? So Dan Glebitz, 
is my drag dad. Um, I've been friends what? with him. There's for- a drag dad now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't have a drag mom. I have a couple drag dads. <laughs> I <Actually>, have three. <laughs> I, I, like, I just learned goop last week. Okay. Like this, <laughs> this whole week is really like screwing with my head. Drag dad. Okay. So your drag dad is whom? Dan Gleibitz. Dan Gleibitz. And how did you connect with Dan Gleibitz? Uh, Dan and I have been friends for a really long time. We play D&D together. Spoiler, spoiler alert. I'm also a nerd. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> like so, so we play D D together. <laughs> and he he's a performer as well? He is a drag king, yeah. He's a drag king, or they are a drag king. I just I do apologize if I uh he him and drag. Okay. He, they out of drag. So he is a drag king. And what so what is the so this is this is gonna sound like the, this is gonna show how bad of a gay I am. I don't know what a drag house does. What is it? Like, what is the concept of a drag house? They are your chosen family, essentially. Like, I 100% consider Dan, like, family in real life, too. Like, they're the family that you Like, what do you guys do? Like, are it, like like I like I think of my family and I think that's not really a like realistic expectation of what people should do in a drag house but like what is a drag family at the end of the day is it just people who can you can rely on because we have a tight-knit community but it does it go a step further in the drag family they are the people who at the end of the day are going to be there for you through all of the ups and downs and they're going to give you advice honestly on your drag like Dan has given me a lot of constructive criticism over the last year even before they became my drag dad like they've come out to a good chunk of my shows we've performed together we've done a duets together now so they've basically helped me grow as not only a person but as an artist as well and do you get any like it- it's great to have someone there, but do you, do you like, it, is it a give and take? Like you will go to their performances. You will be that honest person for their drag as well. Because when drag, when Dan goes out in drag, do you say, mm, you have to change that? Or is it more of a him being the father figure to you to be sort of mentoring you through the process of becoming the, uh, the drag performer that you are? Oh, it absolutely does go both ways. Like he is more of the father figure, but it does go both ways. When like something's not working, I'm not going to lie to him and tell him it works. I'm going to be like, yo, Dan, that doesn't work. I love you, but no, don't do that again. (laughs) This is why I would not make a good drag queen because I would not be honest with anyone. I would be the, like the subtle person in the background, just going that. (laughs) Good job. (laughs) You, you do you, you. And I think part of it is the honesty. It's such a loving honesty. Like, it's not like they're being harsh and mean. They're being honest. And so, sometimes honesty is not the greatest. <laughs> like, So how, do, how does one become part of a family? Because I think that's the biggest unknown that I have when it comes, well, besides the fact that I didn't know that there's a lot of things that you've mentioned today that I'm still, still going to be talking about to my husband for the next, like I said, month and a half. <laughs> But how does it, how does one become part of a house? Um, for me, Dan adopted me. Like he became my mentor. He became the person that I turned to when I needed advice. Like when I'm trying to put together a performance, I can be like, call Dan up and be like, Hey, do you think this would work? What do you think of this concept? Like, so there's no like, like secret handshake or anything. It's more of a, no. <laughs> Hey, we were friends and you're willing to be part of my house. Yeah, and you're willing to mentor me, and I'm your dad. <laughs> That's basically what it was. Really? Oh, so <laughs> there was no big initiation or anything fancy. It was just like I'm going to adopt you and mentor you because I see you have potential. I am so I am so fascinated with this industry now because here I was, and I will be honest. I am the I I like my husband says he's going to take my gay card away from me one day because I don't, I, I've never known the drag industry. Like I did not start watching, watching RuPaul's Drag Race until 
last year like at the like the summer of the pandemic and i just didn't get it beforehand just never watched it but we are living in a world where it seems like the drag industry is not an industry it's a family it is like i mean even those who aren't in my drag family like i still would 100% like go to the ends of the earth for my friends like in the community do you like in the house of uh Gibet, Gibet? Gibets. Gibets, so Gibets. um do you have brothers and sisters like is there drag brothers and sisters or like is that the concept as well or i, just I have a new sibling i just met them for the first time on wednesday actually um, okay That's delilah awesome. is absolutely lovely um she hasn't performed yet but i'm sure she will but, and, yeah. and you will be out there for her first performance, probably. Oh, 100 percent. This I am like shocked right now. This I, I was expecting this interview to go one complete way. And you are like, like you are the educational part of this week. Like, honestly, you are <laughs> teaching me so much right now, Jessica. It is fabulous. I want to ask about the name Jessica. Jessica Rabbit. How did the name come about and why did you choose that name or did it choose you? It was given to me, actually. Um, so people can give you names. <laughs> absolutely. Oh my God. I'm so, so prior know. to starting drag, I modeled. I still model. I just do it a little less now. Okay. Because drags become more of my focus, whereas before modeling was my focus. And um, I ended up with a stalker. So I was talking to a friend of mine who was a drag queen here too, Miss Elanius. Um, she's no longer around, unfortunately. Um, she kind of disappeared off the face of the earth. No one really knows what happens to her. Okay, <laughs> she, I, th I thought something bad had happened to her. So I was like, oh. We've never heard from her since. <laughs> okay. So I was talking to her and she turns to me and she's like, well, let's like give you a new name. So you can just like, you know, start fresh. These people aren't going to know this name. They're not going to know how to find you under this name. And so I was like, I have no idea what the hell to name myself. Like, I, I'm bad at this. <laughs> like, I've been using the nickname I've had since I was 10. <laughs> and so she's like, give me a minute. And she's like, Jessica Rabbit, because you got those curves to die for. And I've seen you in a red gown. Jessica Rabbit. <laughs> yeah. my God, I feel so <laughs> stupid right now. Oh, my sweet mother of God. And then she's like, and you've got that like kind of horror twist because I do, I do like the horror. <laughs> Which I, and I follow you on social media. And for anyone who is uh, uh, listening and watching, please go check out the show notes because follow her, uh, Jessica, on uh, Instagram because you think drag is going one way of what you see on RuPaul's Drag Race and then you watch what Jessica puts on her Instagram stories and you go, whoa, what is this? So I know this is coming out in November, but you're doing something for Halloween, correct? Um, I did the Elvira show at Dickens last Thursday. That's yes. probably the only Halloween show that I'm going to really do. And how was that? How did that go? It was so much fun. Uh, that's actually when I got to do a duet with Dan Gleevitz. Uh, we did uh, Zytrain Anatomy by, um, from Repo the Genetic Opera. If it wasn't oh, on Glee, amazing. I don't know. <laughs> it wasn't on Glee. <laughs> this musical is a little over Glee. <laughs> oh, yeah. But um, I definitely recommend watching it. It has a lot of big names in it. And what was it again? Uh, Repo and the Genetic Opera. Repo and the Genetic Opera. Okay. I don't know if you're a Buffy fan at all. Yeah. So Giles, Anthony Stewart Head yeah. is in it. Paris will... Hilton is in it. <laughs> okay. Like now, you, a... might have, you might have lost me there. <laughs> you know, I, I don't mind her part in this. I'm not a huge Paris fan, but her part in this. <laughs> okay. I will certainly look that up. Um, you, you were relatively new to the industry. Yes. Looking back on the last year of your life since you've started in the industry, knowing what you know now, would you still have done it? Absolutely. Would you have gotten on that stage on that first moment at your friend's house? 
go if I knew what I knew now absolutely I would have been like her, like Jessica you're being stupid like <laughs> you're with four of your best friends in the world right now like they are the people that have been supporting you for the last two years like and you you seem so energetic you seem so you got a head on your shoulders that I'm so happy um I want to get a little personal right now. Sure. And you said you're an open book. And yep. in, in our pre-interview, I always ask the question, is there anything off topics? And uh, Jessica said, I'm an open book. Let's do it. It'll go hard or go home. I think the actual words was. Yeah. Dating as a drag performer. Dating in the industry. Is it hard? I don't date in the industry. <laughs> but dating someone outside, well, not, not dating in the industry, but dating as a performer, as a drag performer, I can imagine it would be tough to tell someone who you'd be potentially dating or dating right now to say, hey, I would love to go out with you, but I've got a standing invitation Wednesday nights at Twisted to go to their Twisted, uh, Twisted's Got Talent show every Wednesday. So talk me through the process of dating in the industry because... I, I've asked this question to Visa. I've, I've, I've also asked it to tomorrow's guest as well, JV. So, dating in the industry is it is it difficult or is it is it sort of semi acceptable? I mean, I haven't really found any challenges with it um, before I had a partner <laughs> when I was on dating sites. Like, I straight up put it on my profile. Like, you know, it's right there. So you're it's part out the open. I'm not gonna hide it. Like. I'm a drag queen. My my photos of me in drag were on my dating profiles. Like I'm not, it's not a secret. And your partner accepts it. I'm assuming your partner goes out to your shows with you. Uh, she there. doesn't. She just drives me. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my husband. Sounds like my husband. He'll 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 support me, but that's about it. He'll drive me somewhere and drop me off and call me when you need to be picked She's up. She's not big on the bar scene at all. <laughs> like, and I get it. <laughs> You, you have opened my eyes, Jessica. <laughs> I am. I'm, <glad. laughs> I'm so happy we did this because I, I appreciate when people come on the show and talk, but I appreciate it more when people come on the show and teach me something. And we have talked for 35 minutes nonstop and you have taught me more in the last 35 minutes than I think I probably learned in 9,000 seasons of RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> so thank you. I'm glad you. I could teach you. <laughs> like That's basically my game. goal is like, A, to help you. <laughs> that's been my goal since I went to university and like, B, to just educate and show people that, you know, it's not the same as you see on TV. And, it's, and you should learn and sit down and have a conversation. It's not... I, I hope by un, uh, unmasking and un, un, uh, pu pulling the curtain out from behind the the catwalk or whatever you want to call it this week, people realize that yourself, Visa, all our guests this week aren't aren't dragged twenty four seven. No, we're not. Like, I mean, I work full time as well as doing drag. So, I mean, I'm pretty well. You see me now. Like, I'm pretty normal right now. I think. <laughs> oh, well, like, when you when when you popped up, I was like, Jessica, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, <laughs> did you randomly stumble upon my uh, my meeting here? <laughs> but I hope people learn. And I know I, I sound a little over the top when I was learning things in this episode, but I want I want people to know. You need to learn because absolutely drag performers aren't scary people. No, they're, they're I mean, not. Go ahead. I'm five foot four. Like I'm really not that scary. <laughs> yeah. Drag performers aren't, aren't scary. They aren't, they're here just to have a good time. And yep. as you can tell, Jessica and I have known each other we've literally met once in person and this is our second time having a face-to-face -face virtually conversation and 
in all my episodes that I've done, this week has been the first time where I thought, okay, you, I feel like I've been talking to friends who I've known for like 30 years and I, I barely know you, you performers. So thank you, Jessica, for doing this. It's been You're an welcome. honor and a pleasure. It's been amazing. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Um, for those who are listening, you know what I'm about to say, as always. For those uh, wanting to reach out to Jessica, follow her amazing drag uh, style, please go to the show notes. Uh, I have linked uh, Twitter, Instagram, and I will find the Facebook account so I can link it properly down there. Um, so please check them out. I would highly recommend it. Um, but also... Uh, our information is down there as well. Follow us on Twitter, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we'd love to have you along for the ride. Uh, you get some behind the scene looks. You get a lot of selfies of me randomly t- taking and from time to time pictures of my dog. So please follow us on social media as well. And also, as you've just learned, talk to people. You might educate yourself on a few things that you might not know about. Jessica, thank you so much for doing this. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.